Monday Night Football, the college version. We're going to talk about that. Florida State, Boston College, plus give out a little couple of totals, pardon me, in Major League Baseball. Mark Zinno, we went 3-0 and on the show on Friday. I feel like we go 3-0 and every Friday, or at least most Fridays. Not complaining, obviously, but we always have to wait a few days to then brag about it, which is always a bit of a letdown. But how are no, you, sir? It's, uh, it's one of those things where, you know, we uh, we like to let the 3-0 the and flavor last the whole weekend long. Yes. Oh, so okay. uh, Friday seems to be a good day for us. But, yes, yeah. very good job uh, on Friday. Uh, I hope you everybody enjoyed their first Saturday of college football. Uh, it was great to watch. I had a couple of hiccups. Uh, two very strange anomaly things happened that I was not happy about. If you follow me on Twitter, you know what I'm talking about. But other than that, we bounced back yesterday. So all is going very well. Yes. Now, on Friday's show, Mark, our best bet was the Boston Red Sox in the first five. And that was, even though we didn't know who the Detroit Tigers starting pitcher was, we said, take action. Don't worry about it. It's it's not going to matter. It's an undecided again listed next to the Tigers on the Wager Talk live odds screen. And you're taking a similar approach with the Padres here on Monday for your half of the double play. Yeah, why? Because I'm willing to back Joe Musgrove at this point in time to pretty much do anything here. If you look at the way he's pitched, you know, uh, in his four starts coming off the I.L., He's giving up zero, one, zero, and three runs. The last three came in to start out against on the road against Philadelphia. And his two home starts since he's been back against the Mets and the Pirates, again, hasn't allowed a single run. He's only allowed three hits in 11 and a third innings uh, over those two starts. And with a Detroit offense that hasn't been good at scoring runs all year long, if you're asking me to get the Padres to scratch one or two across here in the first five, uh, when this line officially posts with Musgrove on the mound, I'm in a spot where I feel like I can take it. Given what the number is for the game, folks, when you look at it and you're seeing, you know, around San Diego being around a, a minus 195 favorite, um, you know, two to one, you should be able to get minus a half in the first five, sitting somewhere in the minus 120, minus 125 range. In fact, I probably think this is playable up to minus 130, minus 135 at its, at its very height. So uh, I'm trusting Musgrove here, <clears throat> excuse me, and the San Diego Bats to do enough. Uh, I, I don't, again, I would put action if you really want to take it now and not even worry about who the starter is, or just make sure the home starter in starts in Joe Musgrove. And, and that's enough for me. So uh, again, I like the Padres here, minus a half run on the first five. Don't care who's starting for Detroit at this point. We leave the bullpens out of this thing. Padres got enough bats. Musgrove has the arm. We're good to go. Smash that like button. If you too do not care who is starting for the Detroit Tigers today, San Diego, Mark says they roll in the first five. We know who's starting in Oakland and Seattle uh, for those two teams in an AL West battle. This is going to be my half of the double play. I am looking at the total. I am looking at an under. Why am I looking at under? Well, Logan Gilbert's on the mound for Seattle. He is the Major League Baseball leader in whip at .90. But, Mark, this man has no luck whatsoever. Well, he has bad luck, I should say. Look at his last start, what happened. Goes six innings, four hit ball, no runs allowed, 10 strikeouts, no walks. The Mariners lose 3-2. to two. Third straight time they've lost when Gilbert is on the mound. They lost again to the Angels, by the way, on Sunday. So I don't want to back Seattle. We know how putrid their bats have been. But we can count on Gilbert getting the job done on the mound. Then you look at the Oakland side of the equation. Osvaldo Beto, my word, the last four starts for him, all of which Oakland has won, he has given up a total of three runs and eight hits. Total. Not just the last start. Total. These teams met in Oakland back in June. They actually haven't played in, in uh, damn near three months now. All three of those games went under the last time they played here. There were three, three, and seven total runs scored. You look at Beto, those last few few times he started. Okay, last time it was a 9-6 win over Cincinnati. Before that, Oakland was able to win his starts despite scoring 3-2 and 1 run. Every sign here points to a low-scoring pitcher's duel in Oakland as Major League Baseball winds down its stay in that particular city. I'm on the under 7 and a half here. Gilbert's one of the best pitchers in baseball. There you have it. Under 7 and a half Seattle, Oakland. To go along with Mark San Diego first five run line, you can comment down below with your favorite Major League Baseball bets here on a beautiful Labor Day. We will be getting to our best bet momentarily. We'll also, again, be talking Florida State, Boston College. Uh, I had the under in last night's football. Of course, I had the under, Mark. 
in LSU USC. I, all summer long, I couldn't wait to make that bet, but I had to wait till about noon yesterday when the numbers got steamed up to 67 because uh, I wanted to make it. Turns out it was a 20 point winner. Thank you very much. We'll be talking about that. But first, today is the last day. You talk about football, okay? Last day to take advantage of that free week of winners, uh, the special that we've been running at wagertalk.com for a mm-hmm. while now. You buy a two week all access, we'll throw a third week in for free, no charge. That's every play. From your favorite handicapper, Mark, myself, you can do it for both of us. Every play, every sport for three weeks for the cost of just two weeks. What a deal. We'll take advantage again. That deal goes away at midnight. Well, you know what else goes away? That it, it's a, It would be great if you guys did me a solid and bought that package as a birthday present to me. So I, I am celebrating today, the birthday, and uh, I would love a package from somebody. How's that sound? Wait a minute. Today's your birthday? It actually is, yes, September 2nd. Oh, a very under-publicized birthday. You didn't mention happy birthday. Your well, presence you. on the way. I'll, Pat, I'll, I'll buy Patty it. Johnson I'll, kept I'll, me up late last night, so, you know. Oh, uh, there we I'm go. This morning. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> ah, I knew that graphic was coming. It's also a good birthday. I knew that graphic. Yeah, yes, also hey All right. Do you know what a good birthday present would be as well? Another Getting winner? our show best. Yes, hitting our show best bet. And we are going to look at Arizona and the Dodgers, okay? I had a tough loss. You talk about tough losses on Friday. I had a tough loss with Arizona. They scored nine runs. That wasn't enough. Uh, Yesterday, they scored 14 runs, though. That was enough uh, to beat the Dodgers. They finally break on through and, and get a game in this big NL West series. Mark, we're not overthinking things here. These are two of the best lineups in the sport. Arizona. Highest scoring team in baseball, number one in WRC plus since the All Star break. I mean, it's runs all day, right? Yeah, and I think we get a little bit of a depressed total here, just because Jack Flaherty is starting for the Dodgers. But if you look at uh, his starts since coming over from Detroit, he had a great first outing against Oakland, six innings, five hits, no runs, and had, since then it's been a really kind of you know average set of stuff. You know, he's given up four runs, three runs, two runs, and three runs. And the two runs he gave up were a start against Seattle, who uh, is bad on the road, can't hit on the road, and they still managed to score two off of him. He hasn't. He's only gone six innings twice since coming over, so he's not pitching that deep into games. Um, This is a guy that can be hit by this lineup. So I'm not worried necessarily the fact that it's Flaherty on the mound that, oh, God, they're not going to be able to to score on him. The, The Diamondbacks are starting Eduardo Rodriguez, who's now making his fifth start since being signed off of you know, uh, immigration. I don't know where he came from. He was sitting out the whole entire time and wherever he's been. Um, But nonetheless, he's given up at least three runs in three of his four starts. The one that he didn't was against Miami, which isn't exactly a very good offense. Uh, And now you have a Dodgers team that hits lefties really well. So from that standpoint, this is a a spot here where I think that we get a little bit of a, a normal total given these two offenses at eight and a half. You try to take advantage of it, right? I mean, it usually... With these two offenses, totals would skew a lot higher than that, closer to nine. So let's take advantage with uh, the Dodgers and D-backs going over eight and a half here. Yeah, we've had games where they combined for 19 runs, 17 runs. Seems good to me. Your show best bet over Dodgers, D-backs. I mentioned, we're going to talk about the college football game in just a minute. I mentioned yep. I had the under last night in USC LSU. It was part of a three and one Sunday for yours truly. Now a 12, five and one all sports run the last nine days at Wager Talk. Dot com. Head on over to wt.buzz slash bp. I have not locked anything in yet on Labor Day, but there's a few things I'm eyeing up. And you can catch me on Wager Talk today with Teddy and Steve Merrill. Mark, what do you got going on Monday over at your pay on your birthday? What are you going to serve up to your clients? Uh, served up a winner last night. We're only baseball play. Uh, we, we stayed off the game on Sunday night between LSU and, uh, and USC. Just a lot of variance for me. And to all those who, uh, who who jumped on USC, good job. Um, and those who jumped on the under, even better job, Brian Power. Yeah, I don't Thank know you. if I'm going to get to the window on this college football game. Um, I, I, it's hard to figure out. We'll, we'll talk more about this in a second. Just hard to figure out what Florida State is. But I'll have a baseball play up tonight. Uh, another 4% play that we'll get to uh, for tonight at the site, wst.buzz slash mz. All right, Boston College, Florida State. Boston College gave Florida State a scare. We were talking about this off air last year, kind of remembering yeah. how that game went. I remember I was, I think I was, I was hanging out with some buddies watching that game at the time. And Florida State, I believe they benefited late. It wound up being a two point game. BC was a 25 point underdog. They came back. 
Jordan Travis got hurt in that game. There was a key penalty late that sealed the deal for Florida State. I can't remember if Boston College did something dumb like targeting or if it was a phantom holding call. Nevertheless, Florida State obviously held on. They were undefeated in the regular season, left out of the college football playoff. You mentioned, uh, Mark, what is Florida State right now? They've been properly downgraded, I feel, after the loss in Dublin to Georgia Tech. But DJU, he didn't look very good. Uh, Boston College, to me, is equally. is big. They're a bigger question mark. Bill O'Brien takes over in Chestnut Hill. They've got a returning quarterback, Castellanos. The way the market is moving, it tells me under is the move here. I talked about that on the Power Five also this morning, that you look at it, the numbers come down. Circa's at 49 and a half. Circa, obviously, uh, one of the sharpest books around. So give me your lay of the land here on Florida State Boston College. Yeah, again, uh, I don't know if Florida State is as flawed as they looked in a game against Georgia Tech that they lost. You know, I mean, let's just put it through this prism. Let's say Florida State, you know, Georgia Tech misses the field goal. Florida State kicks a field goal in overtime and wins the thing. How much different does this line look with Boston College is a fair question to ask. And is this thing up over three touchdowns, you know, based off of them beating Georgia Tech, not losing to them? I probably think that's the answer, um, that this line is easily inflated a little bit, you know, closer to three touchdowns at 20 or even 20 and a half, something along those lines. Um, but the real issue is, is Florida State's defense didn't show up the way I thought it was going to. Uh, as much as they've lost a lot on offense with Jordan Travis and Keon Coleman and Johnny Wilson and everybody else who was there last year, um, their defense should have been a lot more locked down. Now, this is not going to be a very good Boston College offense. However, their quarterback, Thomas Castellanos, gave them some fits last year in this matchup. Again, it was in Chestnut Hill. It's a little bit misleading because Florida State was up 31-10 to 10 in the third quarter of that game and sort of took their foot off the gas pedal after Jordan Travis got hurt and – Boston College got back in it, also with the help of a fumble return for a touchdown, a defensive score that made it a lot more of a sweat than Florida State wanted it to be. Um, that said, you know, uh, it, it's hard for me to back Boston College here. I agree with you, BP, in the spot of it's probably going to be lower scoring until you see Florida State's offense with DJU and just go back to what DJU was at Oregon, Oregon State last year. It's not exactly like they were a high flying offense, they were a defensive nope. team, they ran the ball a ton. You know, DJU at this point, no matter how many years he stays in college, has proven that he's not really a very elite college quarterback. So uh, he can come back next year, and guess what? We'll find out he's not a very elite college quarterback. So hit the portal there, kid. Nonetheless, I probably lean to the under on this spot as well. Yeah, uh, this game in Tallahassee. BC has lost six straight in Tallahassee, as you might imagine. They've only covered the spread in two of those six games. They obviously know they can't win a shootout, and I don't think it's going to be a shootout, quite frankly. So a little small combo lean there on the under for you in BC, Florida State. Monday night football, college style. We're only three days away, of course, I mean, from the start BP, of the NFL regular season. You know, when you look at this, it may, it may be worth it cutting it in half and taking a first half under, depending if you're getting – 24 and a half, right? If you're over 24 and a half, um, just because if Florida State's offense is clicking early, they'll click the whole entire game, right? They're they're, they're gonna they're gonna want to come back out and say, hey, this is who we really are, and make a statement. They're not gonna take their foot off the gas pedal. So you know why sweat this thing out for 60 minutes and bring some extra variance in it? If they don't go over early, they're probably not going over late. Um, it would be rather shocking to me to see Boston College be able to hold them to nothing in the first half and then get steamrolled in the second. Because I just don't know that the delta is that big. You you mentioned liking the first half under if it was 24 and a half. Can I interest you a first half under at 26 and a half? Because I'm looking at the Wager Talk live odds screen and that is the number painted across the board. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how you'd get a 25 or a 26 without some quirky, a whole lot of field goals happening or yeah. a safety or anything like that. You know, essentially, that as long as you're over 24, um, I could endorse it. Uh, I think that, you know, once you get past 24, you're talking 27 and, and 31 kind of deal. Um, but yeah, I, I would, I think, I don't think it's a bad bet at all. I really don't. I, cool. I, I would look at the idea of Boston college being in this thing close Florida state, maybe pulling away later, but I just don't know that you're going to see a whole bunch of scoring, uh, early on. Okay, I think we're locked up. 26 and a half, I think it is. First half under, full game under. Regardless, Mark and I don't think there's a lot of points in this one. All right, that's going to do it for the morning wager here. 
Everybody have a great Labor Day, whether you're going to a cookout, whether it's your birthday, like it is for Mark Zinno. Everybody wish Mark Zinno a happy birthday on X. You can find him, wouldn't you know, at Mark Zinno. Very easy. This is how you celebrate a birthday. But if it's late night, he's going to be preoccupied with Patty. (laughs) All right, everybody. Let's pass some tickets. See you Tuesday.